Hola. Welcome to another roundup of Blender update. So instead of doing a one video, one feature now, I'm going to go through some of the updates of what happened during the week. Today is a Friday, June 1st. So this week was a crazy one. We had updates all over the place. We had a new look depth stuff. We have also um, the wireframes that have got an update and uh, we got uh, some other new things that I'm going to uh, show here. So let's get to it. First, the wireframes, they were added yesterday. I made a video about it. And uh, today, the things keep improving every day. So today, the wireframes work not only in the uh, X-ray mode, but X-ray also allows you to go full on transparent. So that way you have the uh, wireframes. So completely shadeless wireframe, you can see through everything without the, the shading in there. So that's a, that's a big improvement that will make wireless even more um, handy in that case. But of course you can always tweak it. It's a slider where you can change the, um, the opacity of the X ray. So it's a separate setting. Um, what next? The world background is also working right now. Specular highlights the objects in the, in the, um, in the viewport can have specular. That's something that was brought back from Blender internal viewport back in the days. Um, the, the same with uh, some settings that were per material back then, um, the material could have good close. Like, yes, it's a, it, it's a test. And I'm, I'm not gonna edit this video. I'm gonna continue like a, yeah, like embrace it. All right, Sp add a material, now it didn't crash, cool. So the uh, viewport display was, on a, was a setting that it was, um, was set um, before it was set uh, per object, now it's per material, and you can change it here in the in the viewport um, for the viewport in the material settings. The same with the specular color and with the roughness of it. So this will look very Blender internally. It's because it's using the same shader, it's a Fong shader. So it's it's for visualis visualizing your um, your objects here, your meshes, your shapes. And the cool thing is that since we're going through all of these panels here in the UI, is that the, there can be unification happening finally. <laughs> um, the viewport display panel, for example, here is similar to what you would have in the scene settings. For example, in the scene, there's uh, some changes, some settings for the scene, the light direction for the shadows, for example, or the shadow shift. Those, they're also in the viewport display panel. What about objects? Well, the same. An object can have uh, visibility settings, for example, for like the name and other settings. That's also in the viewport display. So unifying the naming of, uh, of, of, of the settings that are basically for the viewport uh, makes a lot of sense and will make life easier <laughs> um, for people to find these settings for the first time. So that's another little uh, improvement. Um, what else? Single layout uh, has been expanded more to, to more settings. For example, the material settings are using them. Some of the material settings are using them. Um, <clears throat> the meshes, mesh data should also include now some of them. Uh, I know that the armature uh, has it. So let's go here and let's, uh, for example, select the armature. And these settings also have been all um, now have a one line. Some of them are still need uh, need alignment, but they they they're getting there. The, the this one especially the IK was a tricky one. Um, was mentioning William. This this work was done by William with some tweaks from uh, uh, Campbell. But the greatest thing for armatures this week wasn't this. It was motion pads. So motion pads are back. And yes, they are the same. I, I don't, I'm not gonna make a video dedicated to it yet because they are back basically the way they were in 2.7. They just, of course, they're gonna look nicer because they have a nicer outlines and drawing and, but the actual like uh, improvements to the motion pads can happen from now on, making use of this new, uh, of the new dependency graph, the new, um, um, copy on write dependency graph. So that's another that's another interesting thing. Then um, what else? There has been some improvements in the. There are two new operators where you can 
that you can use to organize your scene. So for example, in the collections here, I have the, um, this lamp and I want to move it to a new layer. Well, you could uh, do a new collection, sorry. You can press M to um, you move to a new collection. You just click on it and uh, this is my new collection. This was already there, uh, nothing new. But the cool thing is that now you can select other objects and move them here. Not only by click, you can always drag it there, drag your object, but now you can also uh, press, instead of M to move, you can also press Shift M to link. So what is a link? It basically makes a, it's, it's not a copy because it's the same, you only have one monkey, but it's, com it's shared in this other collection. It's the same thing that you would do in 2.7 where you would put just one object in many multiple uh, layers. It's the same concept. Your object can be in multiple collections. So um, that's another another handy way of handling handling your scene. This also works in the outliner. You can press M to move to a new collection or shift M to uh, link to a new collection. Or you can just right click, make a new collection or even right click in the objects themselves and you can do even more collection stuff. Like you can select, right click in a selection and you can um, add the objects here. And th there, are, there are many little tricks that are happening for making the collection system a bit more friendly, which is, I think is pretty, uh, it's, it's getting there. And the more we use it in production, the more it will get polished. UI tweaks, there has been a few, a couple of UI tweaks that are, that are worth mentioning. The background of the pull down menus like this ones, when the header is transparent, it was hard to see it because maybe the background will be white will be very bright. And then if your text was bright, you wouldn't be able to, to read what was there. So if you um, enable, this is uh, something that was added a, a couple of weeks ago, one week ago, is that the region overlap allows you to have transparent regions. That was always there since 2.7. The header transparent is something new. And if, uh, if this is transparent, then the pull down, we have this nice background there. But it's a theme setting. It's something that the themes were not using before, which is the, the inner um, color of the pull down. So inner was completely ignored yeah, before because these are pull downs. And since they always have something in the background, they were not used. So I had a theme and flatty light was I had a dark, black uh, dark background. So if you use flatty that light, make sure you uh, refresh, you load it again, like you choose it from the list. Um, but the cool thing is that you can change the color of this and you can change the alpha. So if you don't like the outline and you still want to not being able to read just the way you did it before, <laughs> you can still do it. So much freedom. So yes, that is a quite an improvement regarding that and uh, regarding visualizing your scene. And I think that is all regarding the, oh no, another update for um, the headers. I think this is, this is a, a, it's more of a fix. So the headers in 2.7, and uh, I'm gonna open a new 2.7, so you just not to spoil the surprise, is that in 2.7, when you change the header, the size of your editors, sometimes by the, by, you will do this to collapse and that, I, I've, I mean, I've been using Blender for 16 years and I still had that issue sometimes that you want to grab and you don't know which one you're grabbing. And for beginners, it's even worse when they have smaller, it's just terrible. So uh, instead, since we always had this right click menu available there, now you can also use that to collapse, to toggle the headers. So you click on it and it goes away. And that way we don't have to, like when you know that, when you see this, uh, cursor with the arrows, you know that it's going to be for um, uh, scaling your um, editors instead. So that, I think that's another improvement in, in, in usability and making it more friendly, less prone to, um, to uh, make mistakes. There will be improvements in the way we want to make the, for example, this hot uh, spot bigger. So when you split the areas with a menu, you get a bit more, um, it, it's, it's easier to reach. Also, you could split it horizontal, vertically. We could give the options here. Like 
do you even know that you could right click split area and you can well you can split it horizontally you can press tab to split vertically a lot of people even people from many years using blender said that they didn't know this feature so this should be exposed in a nice uh, drop down here or could also be part of the view area since now we have these settings in a, in a drop down menu. So I think that's pretty much it for now. I wanted to show uh, something else. I'm going to save it for later because it's quite a big deal and we keep, we, we, we keep this uh, content going. Um, that is all for now. I think I, I, I covered everything. Let me know what you think of this uh, new little uh, changes. Optimizations happen all over the place. That's uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about next. Uh, we're testing all the files that have been fixes. Uh, for example, yesterday, the overlays, if you were testing yesterday the, uh, the overlays for the um, objects, the wireframes, when you select an, uh, an object, it will disappear. That was a little bug that got fixed. Um, then um, some other things, for example, the lines were removed here because they were not really needed anymore. Um, there are fixes happening all over the place. For example, the um, HDR background, um, back then when I just mentioned it, you couldn't choose the intensity. Now you can. You can show how intense it's going to be in the background. And things like that keep happening all the time. So stay tuned. Don't miss it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And share it. Do you think it's it's cool to see open source, open source software being develop it this being developed this open sharing everything and uh yeah yeah let, let's spread the word there is hap there is development happening there is software being done and being updated every day being worked on for, for like 20 people here every day plus the people the community that are working online that are testing the things this the this is more than just a code quest it's such like a whole movement that is happening so let's spread the word that is happening here and it will continue to happen even after one month from now one month from now the code quest will be over but let's keep it going Let, let's hype it more that is all for today i will see you again soon let's not put a day maybe i come in the weekend and make a quick video and then we release it all right let's uh, let, 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 let's stop it right here bye ciao